One thing that I really piqued my interest about your writings was the subject of, of counterpoint. And you said that when you studied at Berkeley in the 50s, that it was not a course that they offered. And from your study of perhaps Bill Evans's recordings, you came to the conclusion that your harmonic, uh, your voice leading in terms of your accompaniment needed to be improved. And the answer was in counterpoint. Yes. So, but... <clears throat> How long does it take? They say it takes seven years to learn species counterpoint. <laughs> I didn't have time for that. You know. uh, yeah, but I got the, the general aspect, which was all notes have to move melodically. That's it. So I took that, and I, got, I just worked on moving, you know, moving. Plus, I, I was also into Brazilian music at that time. Uh, and, and studying Brazilian harmony, which is basically four-note harmony, you know, four-note guitar harmony, uh, and the voice leading that they do and get their get the, the harmonic passages they do, it just fit perfectly in with with what I was working on at at the time. Um, uh, how did so you? Say, could, how, how did I couldn't do counterpoint, but I could do my version of counterpoint, and I and I I. Uh, I had some coaches on the way, and I said, I wrote a couple of things, and, I, and what was his name? Um, Harvard University. He had the jazz department at Harvard University, and he wrote the Bill Evans book on, uh, on, the, on a Bill Evans song. Uh, anyway, he, he was my mentor, and I wrote him something. He says, no, that's, that's not counterpoint. <laughs> but but I, what I realized, I really had to know my inversions much better than, than I did. Uh, and and my passing chords. I mean, I take a lot of notes out, and so I like so that on, on the bass solos, I can do three note voicings that sound like the voicing without being dictatorial. Um, uh, I, I I got the concept that the general concept was what I needed. All all notes in in voice leading have to move melodically. Right. So that's what I I took my time. I sat down and. I, Picked them out, you know, one by one. By the time. <laughs> can you, the can you just, just, it might be kind of dry, but can you give an example of that? Like a chord? What, 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 what would you have done in the past that you did differently as a result of this new training? And you can well, be technical. I, well, I, I, you know, well, of course, everybody knows drop two. That you have to learn, learn drop two. But I didn't know about drop two and four, drop three, and drop, drop this and that, and all the all the other different kind of drop voices. So um, I, uh, that's, where, that's where the inversions came in, because if you're going to keep repeating, I can play you an example on the piano. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, why not? I, if you don't mind. Not at all. So here's drop two and four. from the drop two and four to taking one note out of that and then I had my three note voicings that sound like the changes. Yeah. Right. Well, I didn't have, I didn't, it never occurred to me to do all those uh, uh, those drop voicings. Uh, I still got a lot of work to them. So now that I'm retired, I'm, I'm thinking about all the things that I didn't, I've never <laughs> Thorough enough with I gotta go back and work on yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Get all my my voicing. Yeah. Um you know in every inversion. So basically that's what I've been doing is using inversions to get that kind of a, a, a melodic motion. You know, everything was moving by steps. 